Hello, my horde, and Happy New Year! Or rather, Happy New Year's Eve, because that's when I'm planning to post this video. Um, I was originally just gonna do my normal content this week, which I am still intending to do. You should see that on Friday, which should be the day after this video goes up. Um, but I realized, um, it's the end of the year. Uh, and this is the, the time of year that people kind of take a look back and think about the year. So I wanted to make a sort of a year-end vlog. Because honestly, it feels like so much has happened this year, and it has. Um, and I know it's been a rough year for literally everyone. Even if you got to continue to work from home and had no interruption in your finances, you had interruption in your day-to-day -day life, and that is also bad. Um, although a lot of us did have major interruptions in our finances, from which many people have not recovered. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, like, I don't even remember the beginning of the year, like, somebody told me, um, Justin Bieber's Yummy came out at the beginning of the year, and I'm like, that wasn't last year? <laughs> Not that I care, but just that, like, I watched a particular video of someone critiquing that song, <laughs> that I'm like, I watched that in January? Did I? <laughs> But, obviously, like, you know, uh, we started out the year, uh, and everything felt okay, even though there was, you know, started to be looming the whole nonsense of this year, uh, and then for me, like, in February, I had, uh, we had in, we had Book of Mormon one of, like, my favorite musicals, and I got to work on Book of Mormon uh, for a whole week. And then immediately after that week is uh, when live theater started to drop. Um, so I actually didn't end up back at the theater for the rest of the year. That February was the last time I worked at the theater uh, because they they... A lot of shows started dropping, rightfully so, but that's when it started to hit. Um, and then, you know, mid-March happened, and my husband and I were both furloughed. Um, I believe I was furloughed like a week after he was, um, and I actually went back sooner. I believe I was back in May. Like, I was really only furloughed for two, maybe three months, and I know a lot of people had worse than that. Um, and like my husband didn't get to go back for another like half a month after I did, so two or three weeks. Um, but, but when I came back, um, I was actually the only seamstress from the team of three that came back to the bridal job. I may have forgot to mention that I was talking about the bridal job at that point. Um, because I wasn't working at the theater at all at that point. I was brought back into the bridal job, uh, the other two seamstresses. So there's a, a manager and three seamstresses. And the other two seamstresses uh, did not come back for very understandable reasons. Um, so I actually ended up, for a while, I was working almost full time <laughs> to pick up the slack until we were able to hire somebody else. And then I was working closer to 28 hours a week. Um, my hours have actually kind of dropped since uh, closer to 20 because we've had to spread ourselves out because we need a few extra hands but don't always have the hours but want to keep people, you know, around. <laughs> um, all that, like, retail corporate nonsense. I'm sure that anyone who has ever <laughs> spent time trying to do retail schedules has understands me right now. <laughs> Um, and it sucks when you gotta lose hours because you need to keep other people on the team. But, you know, it, it is what it is. And my job was always technically part-time 20-ish hours. Um, and that is about what I'm getting now. Uh, when my husband went back, it was actually 
a month, month and a half after they got back, um, management was able to push through some really long overdue, really good raises at the theater. Um, the wages had been really suppressed there. Uh, we do we do not make as much as the the positions we hold actually make in other parts of even our own state. Um, it is it was not competitive wages. It's closer now. Um, I still wouldn't say it's well. We're a non-union house, so obviously we don't make union wages, and probably won't. <laughs> um, but uh, and actually, like a oh, right before that raise actually kicked in, <laughs> that is when my husband had his car accident and couldn't work for like two months. Um, so it was this whole like, yay. Raise is coming, we're gonna be fine, and then car crash, and we're just glad he's alive. <laughs> um, and so obviously there's, I'm not gonna talk about it for too long, um, I don't like to be sad and depressing, but obviously um, something that has since August, uh, it was early August that the crash happened, since early August this medical debt has started to loom and the long journey of getting my husband back to walking um which he walks with a cane now which is tremendous and great and probably in a few months he might not even need that um so we're really focusing on that being good although <laughs> uh the uh the theater is and it's not just us, it's every every non-full-time person um, at the theater is going back on furlough for January and February, so that's hanging over us again. And I am really sorry if I'm just saying depressing things, but like this is my year, like my end of year has been this. Um, but on the other hand, also, my manager at the bridal store is stepping down and I am applying for her position. I am not the only one on our team applying for her position, so we'll see how that shakes out after interviews and stuff happen. But I am crossing my fingers because this would be <laughs> this would be my first permanent full-time job. Um, I did when I worked at Bush Gardens. I did have a full-time job, but it was full-time temporary. Um, and this would be my first like permanent full-time job um, and it would be it would be really great because I, I I really actually do like the store that I work at um, I like that I have I have not been bored especially since we reopened and we had a flood of people coming in um, from everyone from well, my wedding is in November, but I want to get my alterations done now because I just, I'm afraid that things are going to shut down again to, uh, we're, like, we were going to have a wedding, but we're eloping, but I still want the dress and all of that. Um, like, there was a, there was a real influx that we really only just saw, like, peter down and that's I think only because you know people don't want to do other things around the holidays other than do their holiday stuff um, and we'll probably see a little bit of pick back up um, but it's genuinely been busier than it's ever been people are people are on it <laughs> right now they're like my wedding is in March can I get my alterations done and I'm like you should really come closer to March and they're like no, because what if you shut down again? And I'm like, okay. Um, which, not to uh, facts, but why I say that, uh, just to make it not sound silly, um, your body changes. Uh, even if you don't intend to gain or lose weight, uh, your body can change in various ways. So you actually want to have your alterations done um, Semi close to when your wedding is. Our recommendation is always six weeks ahead of the wedding so that you're picking up two weeks ahead so that you have time for margin of error. But anyway, that's 
That is for my bridal advice show that may happen, or I don't know, if I, <laughs> if I end up being a manager, I may or may not have the time to, so we'll find out. Um, all of that is is up in the air, but uh, I still I still feel like I have to feel hopeful for next year. Uh, there is so much that could go right uh, that there is no reason to be completely depressed about it. I'm actually tearing up. This is weird. I don't know why that's happening. Um, like, did my face just get really red? <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm gonna sip some tea. Um, yeah, sorry, I guess I just had a genuine emotional moment for because 2020. Anyway, I, I think I am genuinely hopeful for 2021. Uh, things that relate to the channel. Let's talk about the channel a little bit and less about like my real actual life. Um, although I, I do like talking about that uh, with you guys as well. I like to be a little open and honest and not just completely like only Bleh. but um there is there is a line i do try not to be depressing even when my life is <laughs> um but yeah i i really am hopeful um so obviously coming in the new year i am probably gonna do way less toy unboxings uh and that is because i am going to have less money what I do have, though, that I have always had, is a massive amount of sewing and crafting supplies. So, the craft content will definitely continue. Uh, it does take longer to make, and I can't promise that uh, the schedule won't suffer. Um, every week is a little hard um, when I have to work around my husband's schedule and all of that because our apartment is so tiny i hate asking him to like hey can you just like sit and be quiet so i can do youtube because i don't know it just doesn't feel right <laughs> um so i try to only film when he's out um and he may be out of the house less um there's there's reasons that might be not true but i don't feel like talking about them um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go hard at what I already have, um, and try not to need too many extra supplies, but the good news is that, like, I have a ton of stuff. I have, I have little unfinished projects that maybe we'll just do, like, a finishing unfinished projects corner, like, as inspiration, and... We might do a lot more cross stitching, um, like cross stitching. I still have some resin supplies, so we might do some like watch me resins. Uh, there's there's a lot of content that I can do with what I already have that I just haven't been doing. But we'll, we're gonna make that happen now, uh, and I think I think that could be a really good thing because it's no longer. Um, Oh, I want to put a video out this week. Let me just go buy some toys at Five Below. Which also, I absolutely love doing that because I do absolutely love collecting stupid blind bag toys. I don't know why. I just have, I guess I have like a collectory obsessive brain. Um, but yeah, it's a good excuse to not do that, to, that I can't do that. Um, which may in fact force some creativity out of me, which is all I've really wanted, is to be creative anyway. So <laughs> that actually, maybe, um, you know, that's the silver lining there. Uh, but, you know, just as a fair warning, if that's the content you like from me, it's gonna be a little while before we have another one of those. That will return when you know, my purchasing power returns. Um, we'll put it that way, purchasing power. <laughs> is, that, is that like a good way to talk about your finances? Purchasing power? <laughs> I don't know. I have talked for a very long time, but it has been rather cathartic, and I thank all of you that came on this 15-ish 
minute journey with me. So as badly as that was, I don't really have a good outro, but this is where I am gonna end the video and I will see you treasures next year. Thank you.